Welcome back to Elle's Kitchen. Another year, a new beginning, another curry, another banger. So this week I'm going to revisit the chicken doppiaza. Some of you pronounce it doppiaza, regional variances. And um, again, this is a mild curry. Um, nice flavour though, lots of onions. Um, I believe doppiaza means double onions. It's a pretty simple dish. For those that um, know the drill and how to build a curry, it'll be easier for you. But if you're a beginner, I'm Al, this is Al's Kitchen, and what I teach you is how to make Indian restaurant style curries, and we try and improve on them all the time. Um, lots of fans, I'm nearing 50,000 subscribers, so if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, let's get there in quick time, and uh, just press the button, press the notifications as well, so you can be uh, notified as to when I release a new video. And but before I start, I just wanna say cheers. I've just poured myself a nice, ice cold three degree beer. This is a Stella. Uh, you might have caught a glimpse of my Philips Perfect Draft Machine. Not sponsored, I had to buy it myself. Mm. Well worth the money. I mean, it's like having a little pub at home, isn't it? Pull a pint, watch the telly, make a curry. Life can't get any better than this. I feel nice and supple, nice and relaxed, ready to get this curry going. So let's get started. I'm gonna take you through all the ingredients. Right here we have a tablespoon of garlic and ginger paste. This is a frozen one, not a shop-bought jar one that contains preservatives, but one of the frozen blocks that's pure ginger garlic. Or you can make it fresh just by blending 50% ginger, 50% garlic, add some oil uh, and blend it up in a nice little blender. Here I have one tablespoon of Owl's Mixed Powder. Um, this is Indian restaurant, sorry, I've got the burps. Excuse me. I've got one tablespoon of mixed powder. This is Indian restaurant curry powder. Um, you might want to use just mild madras curry powder if you can't be bothered to make this up. Um, it won't be as good as this. This gives you that like signature Indian restaurant taste. Here I have a teaspoon of smoked paprika. I want to put some smokiness through this dish. Here I have two cardamom pods. Crack them open, otherwise you won't taste the seeds inside. I've got half a teaspoon of um, cumin seeds there and I've got half a teaspoon of sugar, a teaspoon of methi leaves, uh, that's kasuri methi, and I've got a small amount of uh, green bell pepper. Uh, just chop off a, a third of a green bell pepper, dice it up. Now remember it's a dupiaza or a doppiaza, and so I've got one large onion, half of it's diced into um, small pieces, and the other half I literally just quartered, so you add like these onion petals, and we're going to fry them down and soften them, and uh, make a nice onion based curry. Well I've got a, a large handful here of uh, chopped fresh coriander, I'm going to use some of this in the curry, and some for garnish. Um, I've got eight pieces of chicken tikka here. For me, I'm loving my chicken tikka curries. I think a curry's not a curry unless you put the tikka chicken in. But remember, you can also put plain chicken, vegetables, tofu. I've even had people doing halloumi curries, yes, halloumi. Grill, um, fry some halloumi, dice it all up, throw it into your curry, beautiful dish. I've tried it myself once and it is amazing. See, the cheese doesn't melt, so you've got these nice globules of creaminess. It's like a more succulent, sophisticated version of paneer. Let's get started. Right, so once we've got our pan nice and warm, we're gonna add some oil. I'll just add enough oil to cover the inside of the pan. Warm that through, and we're gonna start the whole process of building a nice BIR, or British Indian restaurant curry. Well, so the first thing that's gonna go in is the onion. Just make sure you don't burn the onions. We just want to really soften them. Some restaurants boil these. They blanch them in um, water. To speed the whole process up. Right, so we've softened them down. And now we're going to add our garlic and ginger paste. We want to fry that out to get all that rawness out for around 20 to 30 seconds. I mean, this is a beautiful dish. I mean, the, the onions are smelling gorgeous as we sweeten them up. Right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in our mixed powder, our smoked paprika, 
our cardamom pods and the cumin seeds. Right, and now we have a masala base going on in the pan. Fry those spices out. Not too long, but we just want to get all the oils out of those spices, you see. So that when we started in our base gravy, all the flavours have been extracted at this early fry stage. Well, remember not to burn your onions. If you burn your onions, what do I say? It's game over. Right, so now what I'm going to do is we are going to add the tomato paste. So there's three tablespoons of tomato paste in there mixed with some water, just so that when you add it, it literally mixes in really quick. It smells really smoky because that's smoked paprika. Right, we wanna cook these uh, tomatoes out. I've used the Cereo brand of tomato puree. I believe Cereo to be um, a superior brand, less acidic, softer, uh, more mellow in the curry. I love these stems so you don't have to touch the glass and warm the beer up. Mm. Absolutely divine. Right, so I've got lots in the pipeline. Um, I'm writing a book. I am, uh, I've got some lovely family curries coming up. So you can do big portions that don't need base gravy. That's going to be coming up in the near future. Right, now let's sling in that green bell pepper. Right, I didn't fry this with the onions because I want it to have just a little bit of crunch. I don't want it to be too, uh, too soft. I don't want it to dissolve. Just adjust the heat. Right, so I believe I've cooked those spices and uh, onions for nearly enough time. I've been getting some takeaway curries lately from um, Millennium Tandoori. They do an amazing lambuna in Sydenham. I might have to go and uh, me, get to know the owner and ask him if I can film in his kitchen so I can find out what, what secrets he's got to tell. Right, now I'm going to add just a touch of base gravy just to loosen everything up. Remember with the base gravy, you want it nice and thin, like um, semi-skimmed milk. And you want to build your curry gradually. If the gravy's not thin, you're going to have a bubbling soup. But you really want to keep the curry frying out. Frying out all those flavours, releasing all those lovely aromatics from the spices. And what we're doing is we're cooking out that base gravy. And to stop it from spluttering, it needs to be thin. Otherwise, thick soup's gonna be like volcanic lava. Um, thinner gravy, it will just bubble away like water. But you will be left with a concentrate because what we're doing is we're using that cooking time to reduce all the weight water, all the water back out. That's it, that's lovely. That's it, and just let that cook out. I mean, this just smells like an Indian restaurant. That's it, so like we're caramelising the gravy, we're taking it off the bottom. Absolutely beautiful. Just going to add a dribble more gravy, cook that out. Gonna whack up some of the heat. With BIR curry, heat's a good thing. Um, and I think it's one of the big differences between home curries and restaurant curries. You get so much heat on their seven or eight kilowatt burners, you really are releasing all the flavors, smoking the onions, smoking the gravy, flambeing the curry almost. I mean, this looks nothing like what you'll see on a, an authentic, Saturday morning curry curry show 
you know, you, you, you just won't get this kind of curry. I mean, they're lovely tasty curries, all of them are. Um, I just love spice, but you don't really see this on television. So I'm going to add a full ladle of base gravy. Right, that's it, lovely colour we've got going on there. Right, now we're going to add the sugar. And a um, pinch of salt. You can add the salt to taste. That's it, turn that in. Take all the caramelised base gravy back off the bottom of the pan and let the whole process start again. Well, let's throw the chicken in now. I think, you know, with a touch more base gravy, you could actually squeeze two out of that. People are often asking me how to upscale curries. It's not as easy as you think. If you want to double, you don't necessarily double your spices. So you'll just be left with a really strong flavoured curry. So what I would do is just add a, add, a, add a touch more of the spices, each one, just maybe like less than a quarter teaspoon each of what you've already set out. Just add some more base gravy and some more chicken or veg or whatever you're using and you'll be able to stretch to two. Um, I always say, if you're cooking BIR, do it as they do in the restaurants, cook individual curries, um, you know, no, no BIR chef is cooking like a chicken madras for 10 in a pot. He's doing maybe doubles or singles. And I believe you should do the same if you want to keep faithful to the recipe, faithful to the process, so you don't veer off too far away from the curry you're trying to make. Right, it's absolutely looking really good. Well, let's just throw in some fresh chopped coriander to garnish. Right, depending on how thick you want your gravy, um, you might want to add a touch more base to that. Um, I like a dop yards that are quite thick, I'm just going to add a, just a drizzle more. And I'm going to plate this little baby up. Right, I think this is ready to plate up almost. Yeah, let's go. Here we go, look at that. One lovely BIR chicken doppiaza. Absolutely beautiful. Took me, what, less than 10 minutes to cook this whole thing. You can push these curries out in no time at all. Lots of onion, lots of gravy. That looks absolutely beautiful. Nice bit of onion there. Well, let's garnish this with a tiny little bit of coriander in the middle. And the usual Elm's signature slice of lemon. I'm going to put that on the side there. Push that in. Chicken doppiaza. Now it's time for the taste test. Right, here we go, here we go, here we go. First of all, you've got to look at that, look at that. That is absolute amazing, isn't it? Home kitchen, no restaurant cookers, no chefs in sight. Just me, my aluminium pan, some ingredients and some know-how. There you go. Mmm, oh my God. Oh my God, Wonder Woman. That is absolutely out of this world. There you go. Oh my God. Oh my God. God, my mother would be proud, I tell you. Cheers to the curry cooking. You want to cook curries like this? Follow me, subscribe to the channel, buy the ingredients, get yourself an aluminium pan, 
and start cooking. You can start this weekend, do it during lockdown. Don't leave this lockdown without a new skill under your belt. Let me provide you with that skill. I'm your friend, I'm out and I'm out of here.